you think he was a real person? Most of the scholars I've talked to say he probably was. The evidence is not great, of course. The Richard Dawkins says Jesus was probably real, but the evidence isn't great, of course. But what kind of evidence does he mean? Ever heard someone say, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence? Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. This is often the response when someone is asked what it would take for them to believe in God. We aren't talking about that, but the logic can still be used. When people say extraordinary evidence, they mean visible evidence, audible evidence, God appearing right in front of them, doing a miracle that they can't deny. Now that might all be possible, but we can't do that with historical figures. They aren't around anymore, so how do we get evidence that they existed? Well, direct evidence might be something like a body to dig up. That's clear, but what if we don't even have that? Maybe we have a lot of details about their existence, or records about it. We can piece all these things together, and that's called circumstantial evidence. Let's say you're a crime scene investigator. There's been a murder. You don't have video evidence of the man, but you have a witness. The witness gives you a description of the person, their clothes, and even their car. Say you find several people that fit the description, but only one has the correct car. So you get a warrant, you search his apartment, and you find no direct evidence that he killed anybody. There's no DNA, but you do have some clothes and a baseball bat that's been damaged, and both of them are scrubbed clean. All of these details, along with any others that you get from interrogation, can be pieced together and may be able to convince a jury that the man is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. When we have no video, photo, or DNA of historical figures, we can do the same thing to prove that they existed or that they didn't. We have to take what we got, put it together, and see if it's more reasonable to believe if they existed or not. So for Jesus, what kind of circumstantial evidence do we have? Lots and lots of ancient writings. There are thousands of copies of scripture saying various things about Jesus' life, and they are dated to within one lifetime of his supposed existence. We don't doubt the existence of Tiberius Caesar, the Roman emperor of the time, but there are more mentions of Jesus in ancient non-Christian writers than there are of Tiberius Caesar. There are other ancient writers we believe existed and do not doubt, like Aristotle, Plato, Pliny the Younger, Tacitus, and Caesar. Not only are the scripture copies we have dated closer to the original work than any of the previously mentioned authors, but there are far more copies. It's not even close. So it does seem that Jesus existed, but here's the twist. I don't think it's that big a deal, actually, because a wandering preacher called Yeshua or Yehoshua would it not be surprising. I mean, it's a common name, right. and uh, there are plenty of wandering preachers. What would be very surprising would be if he raised Lazarus from the dead and walked right. on water and turned water into wine. And that, of course, didn't, did not happen. So then, what does the evidence say about miracles? Atheists have done the hard work for us theists and proved that miracles can and do happen. Ever heard of the Big Bang? Atheist Stephen Hawking was a big part of that discovery. The Big Bang theory beat out the steady state theory due in large part to his work. So what does he have to say about the Big Bang? Because there is a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. We are each free to believe what we want, and my view is that the simplest explanation is there is no God. No one created the universe, and no one directs our fate. This leads me to a profound realization. There is probably no heaven and no afterlife either. We have this one life to appreciate the grand design of the universe, and for that I am extremely grateful. So he thinks the universe is created out of nothing, the Big Bang, but he doesn't think that God existed. Tell me, what is the more reasonable scenario? That something created the universe out of nothing, or nothing created the universe out of nothing. If nothing created the universe out of nothing, then that means the universe created itself. The laws of logic are required in order to do scientific research like that of Stephen Hawking, but it breaks the laws of logic to assume that the universe created itself. No photo, painting, tree, car, human, building, or anything has created itself. Something always creates something else. If that's the case, then logically the universe should too. Regardless, we now believe that miracles can and do happen, the Big Bang, and we do believe that Jesus existed. But did he do miracles? The point I'm making is that it's a very big difference to say, did he yeah. exist? That's very different from saying that a miracle worker, right. who really did do miracles rather than conjuring tricks, existed. Surprise, surprise, we have to take a look at the evidence. 
Now, we've established, albeit very briefly, that we can trust the New Testament scripture because it passes our standards better than any other ancient writing which we already trust. So now we look at what the scripture says, simple as that. Here's a list. There are things like healing of disease, blindness, paralysis, and deafness, exorcisms, and resurrections. There are also natural miracles like food multiplication, controlling nature, and famously turning water into wine. Remember, none of these is greater than the miracle of creating the universe out of nothing, which we agree already happened. So therefore, all of these are at least possible. But in order for you to make that step from possible to reasonable, each of us has to do our own research. Only after that can you truly trust in Jesus. And if Christianity is true, it's the most important thing ever, so why wouldn't you do the research? In order to be as reasonable as possible, you have to look at both sides. So there's many good atheist and Christian books that you should look at. For now, if you want historical evidence that Christianity is true, I'll link that video that I mentioned here. Or if you want evidence from, say, another religion like Islam, I'll link that video here. Either way, I'll see you next time.